All right, welcome to a very special edition of the GTP. Uh, today, I have none other than our special returning guest after begging him to come back on, Mr. Wawu himself. If you've not checked out his channel already, you must, as he's now producing videos and you get to see more through his lens and want to know what he is buying and picking up. Highly recommend checking out, but we're gonna go ahead and share our reactions and thoughts, surprises, disappointments, and anything and everything in between with the recent Viz Media announcements. Mr. Wu, welcome to the show. Thanks, so happy to be here. Appreciate it coming back and uh, you know, always great to chat with you and you help reinvigorate my passion to wanna to get more content going too. So really excited and more importantly, you've got some interesting and also good releases coming up from Viz, so yeah. Yeah, well, let's go ahead and kick it off then. Um, and just so you guys know in the video, if you're wondering our thoughts, I'll, we'll try to put uh, descriptions below for things of links to the different things. So if you're dying, for example, our first one, we talk about Minecraft, you're like, oh, I want to know what Mr. Wawu thinks about Minecraft. Um, you'll be able to click that below. So we'll have that for each section in case maybe you're not as excited about some of these other picks as we are. But I, I assure you there are some surprises. We've done some research and we'll give you some additional tips and, and things that you may did not even know that. And we might be able to just be on the cusp cutting edge before you can share it with all your friends all the wonderful things going on. And we'll create this in a podcast form. So that way, if you're running, you can just hear our antics instead. So uh, let's go ahead and talk then about um, our first one. I believe Yuri had a good as a take for us before we hit record on my, the manga Minecraft Volume 1. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, I think for their first announcement came out of nowhere, but also at the same time, very much so a very safe choice for them, right? You know, the Pokemon series, you kind of see them all on the shelves and you wonder who's buying them. Yet they keep reprinting, restocking, doing more bigger versions. So, you know, Minecraft is really hitting its stride fully as a game for younger demographics. So good safe bet, I think, on their part. Is this something I'm going to get? Probably not. I don't know about you. Uh, maybe for the family, whatever. But I think I'm going to skip this one myself, but... Yeah, it seems like a safe bet on their part, you know? I I will probably be buying it for my son just because he loves Minecraft. And I think every every kid seems to be obsessed with Minecraft. And it's one of the things, kind of like you said, with Pokemon, where I could see even 20 years from now, Minecraft is still a pop, one of the most popular games. I don't know if you saw, like, on Steam downloads it's or yeah. sold. It's still in the top 10 most played games, even though it's been out for over 15 years, I, I want to say almost. Uh, so it's still extremely popular. Uh, my kids love the Netflix show because it has a choose your own adventure side of it with Minecraft. Uh, oh, wow. So I, my guess, um, I think, like I said, it's a safe bet. And then they even have like Minecraft Minecraft novels. And my son will read those. And he's not a big novel person, but the idea that it's Minecraft, uh, he's read those as well, or the kind of graphic novel-ish or light novel-ish. So yeah, I like you said, it's a safe bet. I know... For most of us listeners here, we're like, oh, man, Minecraft. But I think uh, for families, if you're looking for something um, kind of to get your kids or people introduced to manga, I think it's a, like you said, it's a safe bet. Yeah, that's a good point you brought up, too. You know, it's a good uh, part in the, the phrase gateway drug, possibly into manga, too. So maybe that's their their lore is that hopefully if they get some of the new younger demographic, you know, Minecraft manga, then but people into their other platform, Disney stuff and whatever else too. So yeah. Okay, well, let's talk about our second one, which I was completely shocked uh, just because there's not very many chapters of this. And there's only, I think, one val only one volume in Japan so far for this. But uh, that is Ruhi Dragon. What are your thoughts? So th that's one I know. I've seen that one around a lot. So usually, you know, the Discord communities we're in or even online on X, it's something that everyone keeps talking about, a little bit joking about that it won't be coming out, but everybody wants it. I have no idea anything about it except for the fact that, you know, the main character wakes up, gets horns, apparently, and then it goes from there. So I'm completely in the dark. So when this one came up, I was, you know, didn't think anything of it until I saw everyone's reaction. So, you know, how do you feel about it? Is it something you're super excited about yourself? So it's one of the few that I do read online ongoing. I think mm -hmm. there's there's less than 20 chapters available. So it's one you could very easily read on the Viz app. I would say the humor, it reminds me of kind of like Chainsaw Man, but it's not dirty. Like it's mm -hmm. not adult humor. 
but it has those antics where it's just in a school, uh, young, like junior high setting. Um, if that makes any sense. So some yeah. for the drier humor, the, the artwork and just the entertainment. I'm like, well, duh, of course. Uh, it's, it's very funny. It has a lot of laugh out loud moments and it's wholesome. And of uh, this girl is like, uh, she's starting to get these dragon powers, almost kind of like puberty, but you're a dragon. So uh... she, she's trying to figure this out. And it's just, the school has just accepted that, oh, we now have a girl that's part dragon in our school. And this is how it is. And she sneezes and then uh, flames come out of her. And it's just it's this, uh, they're like, oh no, you burned this person's homework. So it's, uh, uh, the, yeah, I'm, I've really enjoyed it. Um, they mm -hmm. only had one volume. It was on kind of a hiatus for over a year, uh, but I think it's Whoa. a series that's going to be very, very popular. Um, I, I was just surprised they announced it just because usually when Viz does announcements, uh, we usually have several volumes except for, uh, what's that one with the sword that can turn uh, to fish? I was going to say Kagurabachi. That's yes, another Kibar, one that just pushed through. Yes, it's they just are doing the same. I don't know if this is going to be a trend, but it's just like that where I was surprised just because literally there was only one volume that was available. There was 10 chapters, major hiatus, and now it's back. So I'm yeah, I'm curious to see what they do, but I, I think it's it. I think this will be a very, very popular. Wow. OK, well, all right. I'll put that one on my wish list for sure. Yeah, that definitely. sounds actually good. I would check it out at least on the Viz app. Easy, easy read. I mean, you can get the first three volume, first three chapters for free. So let's let's go ahead. The next one is a spinoff of Kaiju number eight. So this one, uh, I've been very lucky. Uh, my library that I work with, actually, uh, if people don't know, I'm also a high school teacher, and the librarian I work with uh, usually checks in with me, a couple of the other students about what manga is hot. And what is interesting and coming up, and as we know, like the anime is getting ready for Kaiju number eight. It seems to be growing in popularity here in the States, at least. And I've been able to actually not, you know, fill up my shelves more so with Kaiju number eight, but kind of follow along uh, at the library at the school, which has been a great resource. And this was something, another one that like um, didn't realize that there was a side spinoff series. I know I assume that Viz was going to announce actually a Kaiju number eight coloring book because they <laughs> seem to always do coloring books every announcement, if you will. So, uh, you know, when this one came through, this one definitely seems something to be interested in. You know, the art is fresh. I really like the art in Kaiju number eight. Um, so definitely seems something interesting to go check out more about the, the extra characters and the stories. Um, have you read this? Has this been on the English online on the Viz app too? I I didn't even know. I'll be honest. I didn't even know there was a side story. Yeah, this is this is out of the blue for me. Um, I don't even know if I want to get it. Um, but I, I really? love I love Kaiju Eight. It's entertaining. Uh, I think the only thing that's a bummer owning it physically is. I mean, I think you can read a volume like in twenty minutes just because it's almost all panels. Yes. Um. Yeah. So if you're if you're but if you're looking for that action, I could see like for library that being very popular. Um. I'm enjoying. I like the series a lot. Um, I hope it has more in the beginning. Kaiju had a lot more humor in the other yeah. volume, more action. Uh, but I thought the humor and some of that wholesomeness was what gave it a lot more heart. So um, sometimes I feel like the action actually makes it kind of go not as good, which now I see why the anime would do a lot better because you'd want to see, you know, those panels actually come to life. Uh, mm. so you could actually see that doing better than probably the, the manga itself. Um, but I'm, I'll, probably i'll check it out but um i as of right now i'm kind of a bit of holding off on getting the the b the b side the b side i don't even know if it's a a one volume one off do we know is it a a definitive like couple run series at all oh you know that's a great question if i did more homework and research for people before we did this uh we could <laughs> we could answer those we could answer those questions. It is as of right now. Uh, no, it just started. It says started publishing January, according to my anime list, guys. That's our source. Mm -hmm. uh, January fifth, twenty twenty four is when it started publishing. So this is this is almost like. Um, I wonder if they're doing this as a trend. What was it? Sorry, what was the name again with the fish sword? Uh, Kagurabachi. Kubarogachi. Maybe they're gonna be like, hey, let's start pumping them out 
fast as we do in Japan. Yeah, wow. That's fascinating, huh? Yeah. It seems like everyone else is having some supply chain issues still and, you know, contract licensing changes. So it's very interesting. They're just pumping those two out too. Wow. Yep. And it looks like it's an alternative to a the light novel that they had. So, and that was only... Uh, so the turn version, so this looks like it's actually based off the light novel, and the light novel was one volume with six chapters, so it could be it could be only like two, kind of like Ace's story or the light novels they've done with Naruto, which is like now Stardust the manga. So my yeah. guess it could probably just be then uh, a two volume manga, and there, it looks like they're just basing off the light novel with that little bit of research I just did. Wow. Wow, look at Viz. Wild. <laughs> well, let's let's talk about um, something that is wild that I I was shocked. Uh, I, I I think you know what I'm talking about. I I never thought this would ever come to English, let alone did I expect it was going to be from Viz. But I think we all were blown away by the announcement of the climber. Yeah, the climber was one that I think I guess you know I I just assume not much really coming from. Um, you know, these announcements, you know, especially some of them that do like the weekly Wednesday ones, you know, I'm assuming some something random, never heard of before, maybe not piquing my interest. But um, the climber, I mean, that that was so wild to see that one kind of pop up. I mean, you know, we have Drac Dracula, the Midnight Children, and that's coming through, I think, is that Dark Horse that's doing that one? Or is that also Viz? That's no, doing... that, so that one is Viz. And okay. It's the innocent is through Dark Horse. That, that's what it is. So for the the Dracula Midnight Night Children, I know when that one was coming out, everyone on you know social media was saying, everyone buy this, buy Innocent, because then that's a greater chance for us to get climbers. So I mean, I know I did with Innocent and Dracula just because the art looked fantastic. You know, same thing as like thinking about like Baki. Like that's just something that I don't picture ever coming you know, to the States, if you will. So I didn't picture Climber coming at all. So seeing that announcement, you know, maybe us as the people won and, uh, you know, putting our money where our interest is with getting Dracul and Innocent really helped drum up that support for Climber to come stateside. So I'm super excited too. I used to be um, a competitive rock climber, if you will, oh. back in like 2008, 2009. So, um, you know, that's a series that's always been interesting to me in general. Um, yeah, like the Jiro Tenugachi as well, like the 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 gods, mountain gods, that one as well. So I love the rock climbing. So I'm really excited for this. Super excited. Yes. And just so our listeners, in case you're wondering why did we bring up Innoc or Innocent and Midnight Children, it is by the same author as Climber, uh, for those that weren't sure. And yes, I agree with you. Uh, that's why I partly I bought Innocent and... Midnight Children was, hey, I want to show that, hey, this is something we value. And if you're willing to get this author uh, for these titles, would you take the risk for Climber? And one thing I thought was interesting when I was pulling up just research is it's in the top 50 for my anime list, the Climber, and we have not had an English release. So for an English website to have something mm -hmm. that popular and yet think of how many people have no knowledge of it. Um, True. I think I think it's I my hope is it'll really it'll blow up. Hopefully they'll uh you know have some nice covers and some good spine and put some good effort with it as well to try to match how well that Dracul and Innocent, you know, additions are too. So that would be really great. Help drum up support for people to uh get into it. Cause I think yeah. it's gonna be great. And as of right now, it looks like the rumor is it's gonna be a two in one edition. As Amazon D E has it as a two in one so we'll we'll see what comes in english i just hope it's affordable uh because Mid midnight children is it's like 28 the msrp and yeah. that's one volume I mean, it's hardcover but uh it doesn't feel good to me seeing that like jojo bizarre adventures which is 25 msrp and almost feels like two uh the the thickness so yeah. that's my only concern is how much did they have to pay for the publishing rights uh for the IP is, you know, was IP more expensive? So I just, I just wanted to be as accessible as possible where, um, even though I'm enjoying Midnight Children, I don't think it's as accessible for re most people where I could, I think it probably should have just been a Viz signature for 1499 MSRP. Yeah, that's a really good point. 
that's a really good point, actually. Yeah. So hopefully it is competitively priced. Yes. Okay. So the next announcement, um, I know a lot of people this is probably a, a bit emotional for this, but I think we saw this coming is the uh, the learn how to make manga from the past editor in chief of the weekly shown jump. Um, this is for the for the Dragon Ball uh, coming coming out. Um, rent, yeah, showing the the techniques and how they collaborate their craft. Did you know yeah. anything about this? So, Doctor uh, Mascherito, I think, is also a character in the Dragon Ball lore. I might be wrong, um, but there's a name really close to it, I think. But you know, for Akira Toriyama, you know, passing away, and Kind of not surprised that they found a way to kind of honor it with, you know, learn how to do manga. I mean, I remember drawing back in, God, maybe 1998, you know, on my own, just trying to draw Dragon Ball Z stills. It's from the anime of itself. So I think I think that would be good for a lot of people. You know, obviously paying homage, which is great. And the art style is unique. You know, there's nobody else really doing that art style, too. So it's really good to look at an expert, somebody who did such a huge legendary mark in the industry. So I think it'll be cool. I don't know if it's one I'll be grabbing per se, but I think it's going to be really good for those that are uh, into the art and intrigued on, you know, the legendary Akira Toriyama and the stylings of them, if you will. Mm, I completely agree. Well, let's, let's move on to our next one then. This is uh, Boruto. Uh, the, was it the two blue vortex? I might be one of the few that's been loving this time skipped era. Uh, I, I don't know if it's time skip in general because Blood on the Tracks, the time skip in that series, blew my mind. Spoiler alert for those of you who may have not caught on yet. Um, but the time skip for Boruto, the two blue vortex, has been fantastic. I know a lot of people have been complaining online about Boruto in general, you know, the power scaling issues, if you will. Um, but it seems like the story is back on track to a really good way. That is, you know, homage to you, the original Naruto, but I think it's moving in a really good direction. So I'm super excited for this. I don't know if if you've kept up with Boruto, the two blue vortex, but this time jump is fantastic, really good fight scenes um i've been following along you know every time it comes out and the choices they're making are kind of bold um and i think it's for the best and i'm really excited for where it's going pretty good well i so i have not caught up with boruto boruto but i would say as i was doing research and looking online according to my anime list is the two the blue vortex is very popular and it's actually a much higher rating from user score than uh, Boruto. And it maybe it sounds like maybe they listened to the audience or took a step back. Uh, I was actually surprised. Uh, this was something I was actually surprised we didn't get any box set announcements. So I could, with Boruto being 20 uh, volumes, I'm surprised we didn't, get, we're not getting a box set for that, especially with Naruto. Uh, but this one, I, I would say, is I'm actually more intrigued to now check it out with just seeing what you're saying about the blue vortex being so good and the yeah. direction they're making, it does intrigue me. Want to go back to this universe uh, just because it does sound, it sounds like they are now making the direction that people have wanted for a long time. Allegedly, I think Kishimoto is back helping or in the, in the writing or the lore mm -hmm. being almost maybe like a reference point to consulting, but it feels a lot stronger. The writing's a little bit better. The plot makes sense, <laughs> you know, and um, I, I like the choices they're making. Good art styling, too. So definitely check out the Two Blue Vortex. Some really cool scenes happening in there. So would, would you say, could I check that out with not reading the rest of Boruto, or do I need to go through those 20 volumes? Oh, you kind of do need to, but it's more of the back half of those 20 volumes. So I think if I remember like the first eight to 11 volumes or so kind of finished this one transition arc of Boruto in the village. And then it starts transitioning a little bit more away into his own story, if you will, because there's a lot that obviously mirrors his father, you know, and all that kind of stuff. So the second half of Boruto is kind of needed to get to where we are now. Okay. Yeah. 
Okay, that's good. So let's talk about next our first shoujo announcement, and this is Firefly Wedding. This one I have no idea anything about. I like the cover art, you know, and sometimes when they pick the right cover art, uh, I'll dive in, like the Steel Celestial Shadows. No idea anything about it, never heard of it before. We talked about it, and same thing. The covers looked interesting enough. The summary seemed kind of generic, um, but... You know, got to see how the insight goes. I would probably put this on a lower lower priority for me and kind of wait to see uh, how those that are fans of it kind of pan out. But it is something that is, you know, on the lower end of my radar. But I've never heard of it before. Have you heard of it before? I hadn't heard of it, but I immediately looked it up. And Comic Key had the first couple chapters for free. And I loved it. I it just this it was so interesting. Uh, just the idea of this uh, ass assassin guy and kind of like she's going to be, from what I read, kind of she's she's going to be killed and she's mm -hmm. like, hey, marry me. And that's going to keep her alive. And it's it was a lot more uh, brutal, like there's blood all over him. He's cutting people's arms off like <laughs> you're just like, oh, dang. Whoa. <laughs> there's this girl who's now with. So I was like, I was like, is this show <laughs> uh, So it was a lot more intense than I was uh, realizing. But uh I, I was intrigued. I, I thought the first three chapters I read, I think it was Comic Key had them, uh, was, was really good. And mm -hmm. I will definitely uh, be picking up the first volume. Wow. It's because, you know, in my head when I saw it in the shoujo, I was kind of thinking, like, maybe it's going to be, like, I don't know if you've read Kaze Hikaru mm -hmm. series. Um, you know, something soft, but action-based that way. But, wow, ch chopping people's arms off and... Some some uh, some real adult action, if you will, some senin maybe. So yeah, interesting enough. Cool. Yes, and what do you mean by real adult action, Mister? <laughs> I got you. I know what you mean. I got it. Hopefully, everyone knows this too. Oh, yeah. Hopefully, everyone does too. Okay, so <laughs> let's do. Uh, next one was announcement a a novel uh, for One Piece, a heroines following. Nami, Robin, Vivi, and Persona as the heroines of One Piece go off on their own adventure of the collection of Poe's short stories. Tragically, like last time talking about Ace's story, this sounds great for fans of One Piece and uh, people who like to read words <laughs> more. Uh, you know, it seems interesting enough. I don't know if this was um, popular over in Japan, if you will, probably. I'm assuming it's One Piece, right? Um, but it's not, not what I'm going to be checking out. I'm glad they're, you know, bringing the story out here. Like, we know plenty of people who are going to be very excited about this. Um, but I need more, you know, pictures in my manga, if you will. So I won't be checking out this light novel, sadly. And I, I think if it's going to be like a story, eventually it'll be in a manga form. And I'll just, I'll wait till the manga form. Uh, so if you feel good, well, I and I love One Piece, everyone. I love One Piece. But let's move on to the next one. Uh, Hunter, Hunter 3 and 1. You know, this one, I, I really thought for some reason when it came announced, I was really confused because I could have sworn I saw English releases of it already. And I think what I had, had uh, seen were the Japanese spines mm -hmm. and how they kind of spell out Hunter x Hunter on the top. And for whatever reason, it just looked similar to like uh, the Shaman King kind of style. So I think in my head, I assumed. But I really like that. Hunter x Hunter is the series I've never dove into yet. Um, it's on my list. It's there. It's my to-be-read list. I think I want to tackle it digitally for myself. But um, looking at those, you know, the other ones that are being released elsewhere, I think they could do a really good job with them and kind of honor um, the Hunter x Hunter legacy that everyone really, you know, they're super fans of. I, I hope it stays with that Japanese spine, though, because that, that would be huge. That's a really cool spine, the layout, how it spells it out, almost like the parasite. Um, so if they do that, maybe maybe it'll convince me enough to get it too, to kind of commit to reading it, if you will. But I don't know. You've read the series, right? Hunter x Hunter? I have not read it. I own it, but I have watched the anime. I saw the whole yeah. anime before because uh, during during the pandemic, Hunter x Hunter was hard to find. And, was, and then Rights of Anime put Hunter x Hunter on one of their Christmas sales. So it was like five fifty right. volume. So I jumped on that, and then it took a while before I got all those volumes because so many were in between prints. Uh, mm -hmm. But I I got into the anime like many others during the pandemic, and I absolutely loved it. 
Yeah. It was so sold on it. I just watched episode after episode and I've known so many other people who got into it where um, they're even getting their spouses to watch it that don't like anime. Uh, but oh, wow. Loved Hunter Hunter. So, um, yeah, I really enjoyed it. If you love Yu Yu Hakusho, which it had a lot of nostalgia as a kid, I really loved Yu Yu Hakusho. So, uh, I, yeah, I think for people who are looking for that, if they do, I wish they should do something special with the spines. I think that would make it more worth it. Because I know yeah. a lot of people have concerns. Um, sometimes the viz quality on the paper and the three and ones aren't as nice as the singles. All right, Mr. Wawu, uh, this was another one I think a lot of people were a bit surprised because there's not as much out, but it, is, it just came out last year. But uh, same author did Golden Kamoi, which was extremely well uh, done. It was interesting is this series originally, I think it went to almost six volumes before it was canceled. Out and um, and then he's kind of rebrought to life and it's done really well and I'm even more excited. I think it's a, um, there's even a lesser chance of getting canceled now that we're getting an English release. Uh, but let's talk about Dogs Red. Yeah, I know this one. Uh, same thing like you were saying had been kind of canceled. I think it was uh, like the series before Dogs Red. It's connected to it, right? Um, but uh, Golden Kamui loved it very much. That was one that I chose because of how many not to collect physically. So I did that one, you know, online, reading that one. Um, then one of my good friends, who was a, a ramen shop owner, too, he, he was diving into that. So little book club catch up every week on that. So uh, Dogs Red is something I am very passionate and excited for. I think just like The Climber, this would probably be my second most interested in. I, I love the sports series just because if they're done great and done well, it kind of sucks you in and you get really interested into it. And, you know, some people have some qualms with the art stylings, uh, Satoru Noda. So, you know, maybe there's some reservation there, but I I'm excited for it. I think the art in general is pretty great. Um, and I'm excited to see what they'll do with the ice hockey and hopefully lures me in. I mean, I've been learning to other sports and never thought to care about moto gp bike racing and i am the hugest fan of topu gp so you know hopefully with these sports mangas uh like this dogs red would be really good to get into and has some good um stories with it too nice and i love how you segue for people who are not checking out the series that you feel needs a little more love than it's getting L little little plug i'm a little biased on that one but yeah no i think you know, Viz doesn't treat their sports series well enough as it is. So hopefully this, you know, invigorates people to be interested in them and check out all the other great series that they have too, you know? Yeah, I'm I'm excited. It's going to be a, a day one pickup for me. Uh, let's talk about uh, the next series announced, uh, Tokyo, Tokyo Alien Bros. I've never heard of this. When I saw it, I was really intrigued on the art. Um, it kind of reminded me of St. Young Men. Did you ever check out St. Young Men? No, I um, haven't. So they also, let's see if I can grab it real quick. Very quick. So very reminiscent, right? The cover a little bit. Yeah. Um, of them walking together, you know, with a dog, if you will, and unassuming, you know, in this case for St. Young Men, a little, little plug, uh, you know, Jesus and, and Buddha happen to be roommates. So in this case, you know, maybe it's writing on the Dan to Dan kind of aliens and ghosts trend a little bit. Uh, with these two alien brothers hanging out in Tokyo and experiencing life. But uh, the art alone, very intrigued about. I don't really know anything about it other than, you know, the description we were given. Um, is this something that you have read at all? So I, I wasn't aware of it. I know it's three volumes, but it's actually from our lovely author here, uh, uh, Hira, was it, uh, uh, Hira Sumi. Mm -hmm. It came out. So this just dropped, Fantastic Slice of Life. A really good first volume. It's from that same author. I think there's, I think there's one he did before. I think there's only three volumes in it, but it's the idea of these aliens living, living and trying to figure out um, human life and how they view things. And from from the from what I read from this, was well, it probably will collect it all in one? What do they think? One all together with all three volumes, or do you think they'll do single? Did they announce that at all? You know, I. It wouldn't surprise me to put all three together. I think that would probably be a better thing. And they did not announce what they're going to do, I think, with any of these series on how many are in. But I think that would probably be the... I mean, it has a one on it on the picture, but it could be like, uh, was it uh, Tapio Original Sin? It could be like that where it's just one thick omnibus, which 
may make more sense. And I think that's easier yeah. to read one thing for them than volume one, two, or three. But yeah, I, I don't know what type of treatment they're going to give this. Yeah, because I, I feel like that, you know, if they did it one in a collection, that'd be good, especially since it's not an ongoing series, right? Because, uh, you know, looking online, I think it was one of his first ones that he had done in of itself. So I'd be cool with it being all collected together because it looks interesting enough. And I hadn't checked out that other series that he did. What was it, Hori Horisiyama that you had? Hor Horis uh, Sumi. And gotcha. I could be saying it wrong. And the other one he did, which I think is coming out this year, is what, Summer Vacation, I think? Is his other series or summer holiday or has people in the front okay. like swimming pool? So it looks like they're bringing more of this author's work. So I, yeah, I think it's great. Um, if let's move on to, it's not a shocker is we got our annual horror series coming out from Judo E.T. This is called the uh, Limnia Zone of uh, volume two. Does that mean we've had volume one? Allegedly. <laughs> I mean, I, I I think I'm with the majority. I don't know. I don't know if there's a term for us. Maybe snobs. Maybe collectors, curators. You know. But I I think a lot of us who are at least are you know active in social media community, manga tubers. I don't really see a lot of them really enjoying Junji E2. I feel like a lot of it are getting the the you know the the classic Spiral Uzumaki that one and kind of enjoying and reading it. But I feel like a lot of people just have them on their shelves. I, I don't know, even a lot of my friends I know in person who collect manga, they, they, none of them care for it. If they want to go to horror, they're going to MPD Psycho. They're going to way more intense stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but clearly, I mean, right, it was last year, too, that Viz had that huge gallery for Junji Ito. So there clearly is a massive crowd for it. Unfortunately for me, you know, it's just an, another Viz announcement with a coloring book, even though we didn't get one, and a Junji Ito, you know, another one being republished, rebrought over to the seas or whatever. So cover I, looks cool. No, it's good. I think uh, I know uh Tony Tony's manga. She she really likes his her his stuff. Um I think um uh Marge uh, Margaret manga, I think she literally likes it. And I know the omnibus collector Riley, I know he I mean he collects everything, but I know he really likes his stuff too. Uh but like you said there is it's not it's not for me um, when I've looked at it. It's not like I don't freak out with the horror of it. I mean, there's if I want to see horror, there's I think there's other things that are more in that genre for me. So, yeah, I agree with you. It's it's another one being yeah. announced. I appreciate they're in hardcover. Uh, but um, so I and then some of the pictures are just absolutely gorgeous that he's created. Um, and I, I think it's very, very well talented. It's amazing what he can do. But it's mm -hmm. it's not a genre that I with his style is not one that I lean towards either. But like yeah. you said, um, maybe you're more bitter that we didn't get a coloring book announcement. <laughs> I might be. I think now that you say that out loud, I might be. I mean, who knows? Maybe there's a surprise Jinji E2 coloring book coming around the corner. You never know. No, well, I'm sure it'd be a moneymaker. <laughs> <laughs> which which kid wants to get this coloring book? <laughs> well, you know, talking about the librarian, you know, she said too, she's like, you know, any manga could be a coloring book if you blur that line of not caring and coloring in on the picture. Oh, that'd be awful. So let's talk about our next shoujo release was My Love Story Volume 14. I'm excited for this one. I My Love Story is one that uh, I had started reading. I can't remember who uh, had recommended it. It might have been, I don't know if you follow on Instagram, mainly manga. Um, he's a Brit over in London. Um, and they were talking about how they were getting a hold of these and reading them again and something that I got interested in. I haven't collected them physically, so I've only started really slowly, though, reading them uh, online. So, you know, good to see that they're coming more because maybe that is a good sign for um, passion towards the series and maybe help me commit to actually getting it physically. Um, but I think it's a, a good, funny story. The art's fun. I think it's, it's great. So I'm glad that they're you know, continuing with the volume 14, I think, right? Yeah, volume 14. So that'll be good. I like it. Yeah. And I, yeah, I'm excited. I, I have a whole series. I just finished it where some of them were out, were in between prints for a while. They just reprinted, I think it was like five, six, seven, eight were the ones. And they just, yeah. just two months ago, I think, got five and six. So, which was probably a, a good sign. So, um, yeah, I'm, and I got to say, uh, hands off for Shoujo towards right direction. And we had four Shoujo announcements. For spring, 
where I'm, I'm used to being one or none. Yeah. So, and speaking of shoujo, our next announcement is Pink Candy Kiss. Yeah, this is another one, too, talking about covers. The, at least the art and the announcement intrigued me enough. Um, it reminded me of uh, Runaway With Me Girl. I don't know if you saw that series. It's a girls love series. Uh, actually kind of phenomenal um, love story. But the art kind of has the same kind of like a uh, little bit of like the watercolor kind of look. Like we can see that in the announcement. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't get to check any of the art for it, but it looks interesting enough. It's another one I think is as lower in my priority, priority list as, you know, like to see how other people see it, maybe a couple of reviews for it before I really want to commit. But I am intrigued by it for sure. Mm. Well, that let's move on then to another. Now it's becoming an annual thing as well. And this is our next Studio Ghibli title, which is uh, Spirited Away. Yeah, so the uh, I know that they had put in the announcement before too, um, that they were looking to do like hardcover versions of these again. Mm -hmm. So like I have the Princess Mononoke. That was one of my favorite ones uh, behind me over there. And they're great little, that's a smaller size. So they were for, um, what do you, how do you say? Like personal book size, if yeah. you will. Um, so that they're giving them the full big treatment, I think is fantastic. And I'm, I'm interested to see, because as I forgot what they said was coming out recently. Which one was first that they said was coming out? Um, uh, my neighbor, my neighbor Totoro is about to come out. Yes, thank you. I'm curious to see how that will look before I decide if I want to commit to getting the all in one, because I I like the small little singles. I mean, obviously, I don't know if you've owned any of them, but they're you know a couple of stills from the film with the manga style text to kind of push the story along um but you know I, I love i love 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 Hayao Miyazaki's stuff princess mono could be my favorite so i'm gonna see the Toro Toro one first before i go into spirited away but hopefully i mean spirited away is getting another big interest i don't know if you're a billy eilish fan um but the song chihiro is i guess is based on spirited away a lot of the wordplay in there lyrically so I did, not, I did not know Get that. Into... Yeah. That was very cool. Yeah. And so speaking of Studio Ghibli, I know it's not your coloring book, but instead they decided to one-up you with your taste buds and provide you a delicious cookbook. And, you know, in case you were in the film, you're like, huh, I wonder how they made those dishes. <laughs> well, you know, it's funny because uh, yeah. everyone, you know, on social media or like even the Tumblr era of the internet, if you will, posted about how beautiful studio ghibli does all the food mm -hmm. i mean you know howl's moving castle especially too all the all the food looks so delicious so i'm not surprised about the cookbook if you will um you know i think it's a craze that's going to start becoming a little bit more actually because we've had a couple series in general that have had cookbooks so there seems to be a good intrigue about it i'm curious what they'll do and also if you think about it I wonder if the ingredients are accessible here in the United States for that's some a, of the dishes. That's a good question. I'm, I mean, so we do a lot of cooking at home. So I'm, I'm curious to see what they do. Like the one piece cookbook literally has like how to make a hamburger. So, and I think like pepper and salt, like you're it's like, <laughs> so I, I wonder how is this like, um, I, I wonder how accessible it's going to be. Uh, especially for in the states if they don't have sushi rice or you know how you know how to they may not know how to make a rice ball period so um i'm i'm interested is I, i'm surprised they're not doing just studio ghibli in general because this is my neighbor totoro cookbook mm -hmm. so we're, which didn't have as much food as compared to like spirited away where there's a lot so i'm yeah i'm intrigued to see i'll probably want to watch look at some reviews it might be a fun thing to do as a family but um I think it's a cookbook, so we'll 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 find out. Yeah. But speaking of what's not a cookbook, and another shock to me, just because there's, I think, fourteen chapters, and it just dropped. They just dropped all the chapters. I think in March in English, on the Viz app. But that is a uh, Muagena uh, into the deep. Yeah, I'm excited for this one. I don't know. Have you started to read this yet? I've I'm caught up. I was very intrigued by Inio Asano. You know, in general. Some of the stuff is 
very dark, you know, Goodnight Pun Pun is a very polarizing read for a lot of people. And then What a Wonderful World is totally different. Um, you know, Downfall is also a different side of them too. So um, I, I think just the, the name and backing behind gives them enough confidence to push with it. Um, but I'm, I'm excited to see what they'll do with the physical release. And, you know, if it keeps that nice red cover, you know, that it, it is over there in Japan, I think that would be really striking to have people have on their shelves too. But also uh, I'm excited for this one to come out physically because I've been following it along as well. So I'm very, very interested. And it, um, it's definitely not for the faint of heart, uh, not for kids, uh, but it asks some deep questions like on society yeah. and how we treat people and what does it mean to be a person uh, what what exactly are your rights as a human being? What can what's OK to do, what not to do? What is it on society of people pushing on what you are allowed to do and who they say you can be and not be as a person? So it's I, I never thought I'd be so deep in thought uh, with this story and so fast. Um, it's it's very intense. Um, it's good. I think this is going to hit like Boys Abyss for some people. Mm, yeah no, that's that's a good analogy yes yeah um but i again i was surprised because i mean it's maybe it's one chapter a month or i don't know how sparse the chapters are going to be so i'm curious to see how many chapters are we going to get each time that they send this because it it could be a while uh we'll we could get one or two volumes and it could be a year before a third yeah that's true I mean, that also probably wouldn't be too terrible for them, right? If they commit contractually, do one volume a year, everybody knows it's coming in a way. And it seems it's a good series, I think, for all those reasons, too. So who knows? Maybe it will also help it continue to come out a little bit more quicker over here. Yeah. So let's move it on to something a little more brighter and happy. <laughs> As you can't tell, Into the Deep is not not bright and happy. Uh Yeah. Let's see. Uh, this is from the same author that gave us my love story. This is a star brighter than the sun. Don't really like dive in deep too much on like uh, manga because I don't really know and their their other stuff. Um, but at least looking at the series itself, seems to be interesting enough. I don't know if it's going to be the top priority. I think I've got my top three day ones that I know I'm definitely going to get. Um, but this one will definitely be added to. The intrigue list. I think that's what I'll start calling it. I mean, intrigued and see how it goes. I think I'm being lured by the cover art again, you know, um, but I'm interested in it. Is this one that you have read at all? Excited for it? No, it's it's on that intrigue list. I think that's a good way to say it. I'm intrigued. I'm going to, I want to see more as it comes out. Um, I mean, again, I haven't finished my love story yet. So I feel bad not finishing my love story and then adding something else. Um, with our lovely ongoing collection. So I'm I'm intrigued. And again, it's nice to see more um, uh, shoujo series coming out for us. And uh, yeah. to see that love for the author of bringing out more of their stuff. And this is a newer one by the author that I believe is ongoing. And it's, uh, I want to say it's, it's not even two years old, the series. Oh, wow. It's a, it's a newer series. So uh, next up is, it looks like um, Spy X Family is a moneymaker. And then so... I think we just got um, his other series, the I think Blade of the Moon, or I forget what it's called, that came. And now they're giving us this the one shot of uh, Four Lives Remain. You know, and uh, I, I think this would be interesting for fans because I know this is, I think this was before Spy Family that he made this, right? Yep. Is that what it is? So it'd be interesting to see, you know, I really like like the, um, when we got Mayamoto's, is that right? Fujimoto, yeah, Fujimoto from um, Chainsaw Same. Man. Yeah, I was thinking, earlier words. thinking the same thing. I and feel I like the game is Chainsaw tri Man treatment. Yeah, and I think it's really interesting, too, because like even with Shuzo Oshimi with the Blood on the Tracks, looking at the earlier, earlier art changes. I mean, we know that, too, from Bleach, Tita Kubo. The earlier Bleach art is very different from where it came stylized even further. So uh, I, I think that'd be intriguing enough. The fact it's a one-shot is exciting for me because that'd be great to dive into and dive out. Um, and I and I think it's higher on the intrigue list just because I'm more interested in the artist and the creator's mind of where they were. And now we, we all know Spy Family and have all enjoyed the antics of that whole kind of group. So I'm really intrigued actually on this one 
to pick it up. I don't know anything else about it besides, you know, the description they gave here and there. But I think I might get this one. I think so. I heard it's uh, more dark. It's dark and gritty. So I'm excited to see how we went to that to now wholesome, hilarious comedy. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, I'm I'm excited as well. Uh, and then moving on, our next one is our lovely three, two, one, let it rip with our lovely uh, Beyblade X. <laughs> You know, Beyblade, I don't, I don't know if you remember. Do you remember Crossfire, the board game Crossfire? It was in the 90s. No, no. I'm a 90s kid. I'm sorry. <laughs> so it it was it had a really good rock intro. I'd sing it, but you'd probably get, you know, blocked by YouTube for, for how beautifully I would sing the whole entire song. But Beyblade was past my prime, too. I mean, even like Digimon is kind of out of my prime, too. And you know cool for somebody out there who enjoys beyblade the art looks very very cool though um but i, I don't know i just can't get behind beyblade so it's a skip for me it is a skip for me as well um probably younger audience um my son was into beyblades for a while and mm. he fell out of it so <laughs> and he's uh he's 11 so i think he liked it when he was like seven or eight and now he's yeah. into other things but um yeah it's beyblade if you like beyblade i know that anime did very well um there's an audience for that so i'd say if you're into that i think you already know someone who'd want this and i think it's like you're saying before uh it's a nice jump into if for those who are looking and you want to get somebody interested in manga it's not pokemon uh that might yeah. segue um well let's talk about uh something that was a complete shock for me and i think most of the community People immediately started selling their Viz big editions of this away, mm -hmm. um, which I will not do because, but this is the Vagabond Definitive Edition. Yeah. You know, I don't, I don't know if you've, you might be jumping the gun here a little bit, but, but did you see the potential price point for this? 53. And, you know, I think that alone, you know, people, sure, people can make their choices of getting rid of their uh, Viz bigs, if you will. I'm going to hold on to my Viz bigs. Just because, you know, I want to see the size, you know, sure, the dimensions will be listed on Amazon, everything else. Um, but to see how it looks, it's going to be important. I think people need to make strategic choices in general, just with their collections. So if people want to get rid of their Visbigs for the nicer hardcover edition, that's fine. But I mean, you know, you got plenty of people who still have the singles. Um, you know, this is the 37 continuation, which... How will that fit into a definitive edition? We don't know. Um, but it, it's just it's just interesting. You know, is this something they're going to commit to do for... It'll have to be, what, four? Four of those editions to cover at least Visbigs 1 through 12? Well, it's, they're three-in-ones, I believe. I think each definitive oh, yeah. edition is a three-in-one. So if you have 12... Right. You're right. You're these. absolutely right. You're right. Yeah. Wow, look at my math. Wow. Yeah, so you're and you're yeah. a teacher. And not a math teacher. <laughs> be clear. To be clear, not a math teacher. Um, but yeah, I mean now I'm looking at so keep looking up because they're right there in front of me. If I had 12 of those, wow. I don't even know the height that they would be for and, 53. I mean, the spines are so amazing with the Viz Big Editions. Yeah. And this is, I think, is this our first Viz type of treatment doing a definitive edition? Is this the I mean, we just saw Kandansha do it with like Vinland Saga. I feel like it's a yeah. trend where it's like, hey, Americans will pay more money for a premier, more of a premium product. Um, yeah. So I'm, I'm, I was trying to think back. Um, can you think, has Viz done this with anything else or is this their first shot at it? You know, I think, don't mind me just staring around. I'm, you know, purposely looking at everything, but I, I think the closest thing we've ever gotten to that is really um the full metal alchemist and oh, the jojo's covers. right yeah those those two are the closest we have to their hardcover but as definitive edition maybe that's something that they're going to start doing for their classic series you know it works for dark horse comics I mean, we know from seeing their panels multiple times that berserk is their number one seller and they're mostly a comic book company and then the helsing ultimates were doing so or, Deluxe editions were doing so well, but then they decided to do the singles and those Dark Horse comics are coming out quick. So, you know, it's very interesting to see them 
commit towards this. I mean, it's a great solid IP, right? Vagabond has its fans all over the place and the allure of one day that Takahiko will eventually get back to finishing it once he finishes real, which, you know, we just got those reprints too, thank God, uh, for that wonderful series, which I adore. So I'm intrigued. I, I think this is in the middle of my intrigue list. I don't think it's going to be a day one buy for me either, um, but I am intrigued by it. I think it'd be good for those who are looking to get into it and maybe are the ones who only collect like, you know, the Berserk, maybe a box set here and there, and they're looking for a smaller collection. This might be great, mm -hmm. but I'm definitely going to keep my Viz Bakes for sure. Mm. Yes, I, I'm on there as well. Wait and see. Uh, uh, space, money issues. I mean, I'm, I think it's amazing that we're getting this stream. I think it's a it's a safe bet for them to start, kind of like how Berserk for America, which is interesting, is uh, Berserk is not as unpopular in Japan. Yeah, as it is in America where I don't think the Dark Horse treatment would do as well there. Uh, so I'm I'm curious to see. I think it's a safe bet for them because it's a very uh, a lot of people who love Berserk also love uh, Vagabond. Um, so I, I could see this doing very well. So I'm interested to see what it looks like, the look and feel. Uh, but I, I'm going to, as of right now, it's a pass on that. Um, so due to time, so we're not um, crushing our audience here of having to keep going, but I'm going to shoot out a uh, next is we'll go into the digital exclusives. So I'll just name them. Most of these series I'll talk about briefly, and then we'll just talk all in general. Does that sound good? Yeah, for sure. So we have the Doron, uh, uh, Doro Ron, uh, which was a series that it looks like these are those things that had that had um, five volumes and then it it stopped. So I don't know were these things that completed or was it hey you're gonna get canceled better wrap it up. Uh, the next one was a an exclusive cyborg pilot which is under control which had two volumes and then it oh. was uh, finished and it's um, and it's a bit of a gag manga. And then we have, uh, they announced a Wild Strawberry, which I was a little shocked for that one being not, uh, that's an exclusive for, which is ongoing. And then we had uh, Do Retry, which is another finished two volume combat series. And then we had announced uh, Ginka and uh, Gulona. And that one was uh, finished with four volumes as an action fantasy. And then another ongoing like Wild Strawberry, which is the uh, uh, Shoujo Knoll. And this, um, I, which is a super, super dark, gritty world, which I actually think would do very well in the U.S. Uh, reminds me of uh, Mojo Into the Deep, uh, that, that mm. for the cyborg. Um, so I was actually surprised for that one as well. But uh with those uh, exclusives, which ones would you like to talk about or um, kind of struck a chord with you? Um, you know, in all honesty, it's like a what, what is that series? Alien Invasion, I think, or that also had the short. It got cut short with um, I'm gonna butcher the name of this one too. The Aya Shaman of the person who did Hell's Paradise. Okay. Um, like I feel like those yeah. short series, or even shoot, even uh, Samurai Eight like all of them that were cut short, if you will. Um, I, I, you know, it, it's really difficult to dive into those as a casual reader, because sometimes you can, if you're quick enough, you can catch on. We were building up to something great. The plug got pulled. We have this weird sharp turn to kind of finish the series. So for some of these, I'm a little bit more hesitant on just to commit with physical. Um, and obviously since they're digital, you know, that's I think that's a fair treatment for them to get people kind of interested um, to check them out. Um, but none of them really seemed super interesting to me, I think, except for that, the Wild Strawberry one um, seemed to be the most interesting out of all of them. And I'd never heard any other ones either. So out of those five, just Wild Strawberry seemed interesting to me. Um, but yeah, that's it. For digital, it's hard for me to commit for digital for some reason. I really like physical, so. I mean, if I'm paying the money and... If it's the same price, I'd rather have it physically. Uh, and mm -hmm. I'm I'm very surprised for Wild Strawberry is very good. I think it would do very well. I, I'm caught up on it through the through the online the for the Viz app. It's um uh, it reminds me of Chainsaw Man. I think one of the same right or one of the gosh, I think one of his editors was part is part of it who helped with Chainsaw Man. 
Uh, it it's the artwork is incredible. It's a uh, very very gripping, and it's a very shown jump type of title. So I'm actually surprised that they announced that as uh, I thought it was actually going to be announced a physical release. Um, so I'm actually yeah I was very shocked to see that. Instead, we're getting the exclusive treatment for it. And then I was asking on our lovely Discord chat if you guys ever want to talk with us. If you join us on the Merry Manga Discord, we're usually on there, and you could. Talk to us more in person if you don't want to do it in the comments below. Uh, mm. With that, I think that they shared the only other series we could think of that went from digital exclusive to physical was uh, Mission Family. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. But I mean, I guess if people, you know, support it enough, there might be the allure for them to print it out. But I know Viz is very tough with that. So, you know, I don't know. Viz yeah. seems to put things in jail, digital jail and it kind of stays there. Kind of like Kadansha a little bit. They really need a lot, a lot of views, I guess, with the stats for that to become a reality. Yeah. So as we wrap up our time, um, so uh Mr. Wawu, what what kind of shocked you or what what do you what would be is your biggest surprise or takeaway from this? And what was there anything that disappointed you? Uh I think I'm most disappointed about uh the coloring book. To be honest, no coloring book to make fun of written reality. Um you know, tragically, that's not there. But I think what shocked me the most was, you know, this commitment to these younger series, right? That's something that seems to be unique trend. It's not really happening too much in other big name publishers. You know, trying to get it while it's hot, if you will, like Kagurabashi we talked about before coming through. Um, so I'm very shocked with the fact of like um, Climber being committed. That's fantastic. I'm excited. Dog's Dread. To be committed i think it's going to be really strong with how great golden community has been doing here um but everything else seems to be you know safe good i think they make some good calls with their you know ips in general and their contracts you know the hunter hunter makes sense why it hasn't had one in the state side i think that's you know been a question a lot of collectors have had um but in that sense yeah jinji e2 we knew it was coming just didn't know which one it was yeah, I I agree I agree with you on that. I think uh, probably the biggest takeaway I would agree with you on this and surprise is them risking series that um, we don't even know if they'll get canceled. I mean, when you're still, I mean, part of it is usually it's a it has to be a sure bet series that's doing well in Japan before we even get you know starting getting English release and and we're usually always four or five volumes behind from uh, Japan. So for them to send like a Kurobachi, which it just only has two volumes in Japan and we're getting the first volume this fall, then the question yeah. is, well, how long in between is it to get the second volume? And are we going to be like one volume away always from Japan, like a Kondansha does on things? Um, or is this going to be more of an, or is it going to be, um, is this going forward that we're going to see things so close? Or is it going to be where we're now having to wait a long time, like six months, because they want more breathing room? So because it feels to me you want to strike while the iron's hot. If volume one sells well, it doesn't make sense that you would hold back on the now volume two. Uh, so yeah. I'm very I'm very curious on that. But again, because some of these risks is some of these series they announced is uh, we don't know if they're going to keep them or not. I mean, they're very the magazine. They're very strict on what they keep and what they consider to be quality. And so I'm very curious to see is because um, personally, I'd be a little miffed if i spent money on series kind of like people were samurai eight and then it gets the plug gets pulled from you yeah i know but i feel like viz doesn't really pull back too much on some of those series you know what i mean you know like we were talking before recording you know the yo amushi pedal situation in general where it's a great series it's hard to get into and especially when you're a publisher like yen press you know these first couple volumes here haven't had a reprint I don't think really ever. So it's hard to get to, you know, volume 23 on when everyone who are fans can't get the earlier stuff. But I feel like Viz does a really good job of trying to keep it healthy. Um, you know, everyone was clamoring for Vagabond for the, the Viz Bakes to be redone. Took them some time, obviously, with everything going on. But I feel like when Viz commits, they fully commit. If it was Dark Horse Comics, you know, maybe a little nervous. Tokyo Pop, maybe very nervous. <laughs> You know, um, but I feel, you know, 
they're, they're, they seem to be good. Viz and Seven Cs seem to be pretty good, um, and Kadansha and other ones I'd be a little more nervous for. So I wouldn't be too worried. Yeah, what was it? Well, that said, uh, Mr. Wawu, how can where can people find you these days? Yeah, Mr. Wawu on all socials, you know, X, Blue Sky, if you're there, someone might be there. Um, Instagram, YouTube, uh, even video gaming, probably can find just Mr. Wawu, that is me, playing, you know, Apex or Fortnite. So, um, but definitely Mr. Wawu on Instagram and YouTube, those are the big ones committing for, and same with uh, on X. Awesome. Well, guys, thank you so much for uh, listening or watching this whole thing. But we um, we thought it would be fun just to talk about these uh, Viz exclusive. We'd love to know in the comments below uh, which of these Viz media releases are you most excited about and what were you guys surprised out as well. And if you've not done already, I would ask uh, for, for my community, if you've subscribed to me, would you do a favor and also subscribe to Mr. Wawu? as um, I want him to keep putting out more content. The two videos he's put out so far were were great, and I just love seeing more of his lens, and uh, we need we need more of him in this community. And my guess is the more subscribers he gets, the more that would also probably help him to push that, yes, I need to put more content out there. So please support him in putting out more content and subscribe to him, and if you need to, bug him on Apex Legends to go and stop playing to put out more content as well. <laughs> Yeah, please. Yes. Thank you. Appreciate all the kind words. It's always great to be here. And, you know, Geekside Parents, a wonderful channel. Always watch and appreciate. So thank you to you and your followers for the platform and having the conversation. It's always a pleasure. Awesome. All right. Well, you guys have a wonderful day and we'll see you on the next one.